Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Great Tech Tutorial Series for Part 7, and this is going to be the last part of the tutorial series, and probably for all of you who have been suffering through this series, uh, or not suffering, I suppose, I probably shouldn't say that about my own series, should I? Uh, basically, for all of you who have been waiting through this series to finally get to the fusion reactor, which is the sort of climax of the Greg Tech Tech Tree. Well, here it is. No, this isn't the entire fusion reactor. That would be kind of an anti-climax. Um, basically, I'm going to build a fusion reactor, hook it up to some sources of energy, and watch it go. So, here's how you build a fusion reactor. You need... Let's see if I can remember my numbers. 111 of the advanced machine casings, made like so. 32 fusion coils, made like so. One fusion control computer, made like so. Eight fusion energy injectors. This is, you might need eight, you might need six, depends on what type of fusion reaction you're supposed to do. I'd recommend six, made like so. Four fusion material injectors, made like so. And four fusion material extractors, made like so. There's your automation numbers, or rather your build numbers, not your automation numbers. Those will come later. So how you build your structure is you build it like this. This is the first layer of the structure. Advanced machine casings, one, two, three, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, three. Keep repeating that until you get a uh, circle like this. Give me a moment to stare at it. You got it? Good. On top of this, you put the exact same shape of fusion coils. And you're going to use up all of your fusion coils doing this. I'm pretty sure I've got the shape of this structure right. I'm hoping I've got the shape of this structure right and I didn't screw it up. If not, well, I'll just do a retake of it. That is the freedom of the YouTube videos, I'm not live streaming. Then, surround the entire thing with advanced machine casings. Just on the edges, just so you can't see the edges of the coils anymore. There you go. And do it on the inside too. Yes, this is definitely right. I know this because I recognize the shape of it. There you go. It should now look like this. Now, on top of that, put a layer of the coils, but not all the way, okay? Leave one space here, and actually... You are going to run out of machine casings. Because I'm doing this in creative, I have unlimited machine casings. But if you were to do it like this, you get to about here, maybe, and run out of machine casings. But don't worry about that. If it looks like this, well, you've made too many machine casings, first of all. Second of all, uh, you've done it wrong. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to destroy... All of the blocks here, 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 and there. There you go, so you just have three sticking out like that. Then you want to put your fusion control computer here, in the center, and your material injectors and extractors, eight, all eight of them, somewhere around here, on all four sides of this block. So you maybe want to put two extractors here, I usually have the extractors on the top, actually, so two extractors here, two extractors here, just for ease of automation, two injectors here, and two injectors here, okay? So they cover all four sides, and then they'll have liquid amounts there. We'll get to those later. Then put your energy injectors, one, two, three, four, and... One, two, whoops, three, four. If you made only six, then it would be one, two, three, 
one, two, three. So you'd have six total. And you can put these on any of the four corners here. So in any of these positions on any of the four corners. Same here. You can put this on any of these straight sides here. But I think the control computer and the injectors and extractors have to be on the same side. Right click on the fusion control computer and it comes up with this diagram. This shows you in a rather abstract diagram of how to build this structure. In other words, what I just showed you. This is the computed, the computed, completed fusion reactor torus. So this is what's going to actually do the reaction. Next, you're going to want to hook up all of your automation to it. This is the tough part. Basically, I'm going to go to the other world for this because this is extremely complex. And I don't want to have to set it up on this creative world. I've already got it set up on a survival world, ironically. Um, the material injectors, you're going to want to hook up one pair of injectors to... Actually, let me show you the recipes. The recipes for the fusion reactor are as follows. There is one recipe. It requires 40 million EU to start. For, negative 4096 EU a tick. So it takes 4096 EU a tick to run. Uh, it runs for 128 ticks, which is about 5.4 seconds. And, uh, no, 6.4 seconds. Sorry, 6.4 seconds. And it takes 524,288 EU over one cycle. And produces a helium plasma cell, which can produce 4,096,000 4, EU at 2048 EU a tick. That might seem jippy, but it's not, trust me. Because as soon as you pay the startup cost, as, soon, as long as you don't run out of reactants, then you'll never have to pay the startup cost again. It's only one time. Only when you shut it down and restart do you have to pay the startup cost again. It's like the warm-up cost, basically. So, this will give you a net profit of about, let's see, minus the uh, processing costs. Okay, it'll give you about 2 million EU per cycle. The most efficient, uh, oops. The most efficient cycle i found is the... Uh, not, this is the deuterium-tritium reaction. The most efficient cycle I've found is the deuterium-helium-3 reaction. And that one takes 60 million EU to start, but it only takes 262,144, as opposed to 524,288. So it takes half the EU to run. So, ah, why do I keep clicking on that? So much more efficient. Not as efficient as the start. But if you start up the reactor with this one, for example, and then you immediately start feeding it helium-3 instead of tritium, then you can make it much more efficient. Because then you only pay 40 million EU to start, and then you pay two, uh, half the running costs, and you still get the same output. Helium-3 is a bit harder to make than tritium, but it is uh, good enough once you get the proper automation for it. You can also make iridium with wolframium and lithium. This takes 150 million EU to start and take 16,777,216 EU to run. So it is an energonic reaction instead of an exergonic reaction. So it takes energy in instead of putting energy out and produces a material byproduct. This produces platinum, it's wolframium, beryllium, takes 100 million EU to start and takes in again 16 million. So there's only four reactions for it. More are going to be added in the future, I assume, because there's a ton of plasma types that can be used. So I would assume there's more types. So I would recommend deuterium helium-3. Feed your deuterium into one pair of injectors and feed your helium-3 into another pair of injectors on the other side. Feed them in as a liquid form is what I recommend. You don't have to use cells. Just feed them in as straight liquid via pipes or fluid ducts or something like that. And you're good to go. Then, uh, you can put another pair of fluid ducts or pipes on your extractors, and that will pipe out helium-3 right out, and then you're good to go. Put the helium-3 in a tank, put it in generators. I'd recommend having three or four generators in here, uh, directly wired up to the energy injectors, just so that it can push energy back into the system just so the reactor never runs out of energy. So you put like three or four in here. 
and then all of the plasma that's not being used by those generators, because one fusion reactor can power approximately 33.3 generators with one reactor's worth of plasma. Um, and just pipe all the plasma you can to these, once that's full, pipe them into a test rack or something, and pipe them into a massive iron tank or quantum tank or something, because it acts like a normal fluid can be stored in a normal tank. The energy storage potential of one of those tanks, because one bucket, holy crap, that's a huge creeper head, um, because one bucket of this stuff can it has an energy potential of over 4 million EU, if you have a tank that can store 2,000 buckets, that's a huge amount of energy potential, at a far less cost than if you try to store it in an energy form in some sort of power storage unit. So, definitely recommend storing it in a tank and then piping it into your energy system whenever you need it. One plasma generator should power your entire base unless you're an absolute energy hog. Um, so that's about it, and I will see you on my other world in part 7B, I suppose. See you there. Thanks for watching.